Reba Nell McIntyre is an American singer, songwriter, actress, and record producer. She began her career in the music industry as a high school student singing in the Kiowa High School Band, on local radio shows with her siblings, and at rodeos. While a sophomore in college, she performed the national anthem at the National Rodeo in Oklahoma City and caught the attention of country artist Red Stegall who brought her to Nashville, Tennessee. She signed a contract with Mercury Records a year later in 1975. She released her first solo album in 1977 and released five additional studio albums under the label until 1983. Signing with MCA Nashville Records, McIntyre took creative control over her second MCA album, My Kind of Country, 1984, which had a more traditional country sound and produced two number one singles, How Blue and Somebody Should Leave. The album brought her breakthrough success bringing her a series of successful albums and number one singles in the 1980s and 1990s. McIntyre has since released 26 studio albums, acquired 40 number one singles, 14 number one albums, and 28 albums have been certified gold, platinum, or multi-platinum in sales by the Recording Industry Association of America. She has sometimes been referred to as the Queen of Country. And she is one of the best-selling artists of all time having sold more than 85 million records worldwide. In the early 1990s, McIntyre branched into film starting with 1990s Tremors. She has since starred in the Broadway revival of Annie Get Your Gun and in her television sitcom, Reba, 2007, for which she was nominated for the Golden Globe Award for Best Performance by an Actress in a Television Series Musical or Comedy. Early Life Reba Nell McIntyre was born March 28, 1955, in McAllister, Oklahoma, to Jacqueline, Nay Smith, born November 6, 1926, and Clark Vincent McIntyre, November 30, 1927, October 23, 2014. She was named for her maternal grandmother Reba Estelle Smith, Nay Brassfield, October 6, 1903, May 12. 1970. Reba Smith was the daughter of Byron Williams B.W. Brassfield, May 13, 1874, September 12, 1906, and Susie Elizabeth Brassfield, née Raper, February 2, 1871, April 18, 1935. Her father and grandfather, John Wesley McIntyre, February 19, 1897, February 13, 1976, were both champion steer ropers and her father was a world champion steer roper three times, 1957, 1958, and 1961. John McIntyre was the son of Clark Stephen McIntyre, September 10, 1855, August 15, 1935, and Helen Florida McIntyre, née Brown, May 19, 1868, May 16, 1947. Her mother had once wanted to be a country music artist but eventually decided to become a schoolteacher, but she did teach her children how to sing. Reba reportedly taught herself how to play the guitar. On car rides home from their father's rodeo shows, the McIntyre siblings learned songs and harmonies from their mother, eventually forming a vocal group called the Singing McIntyres with her brother, Paik, and her younger sister Susie, her older sister Alice did not participate. Reba played guitar in the group and wrote all the songs. The group sang at rodeos and recorded the ballad of John McIntyre together. Released on the indie label Boss, the song pressed 1,000 copies. In 1974, McIntyre attended Southeastern Oklahoma State University planning to be an elementary school teacher, eventually graduating December 16, 1976. While not attending school, she also continued to sing locally. That same year she was hired to perform the national anthem at the National Rodeo in Oklahoma City. Country artist Red Stegall, who was also performing that day, was impressed by her vocal ability and agreed to help her launch a country music career in Nashville, Tennessee. After recording a demo tape, she signed a recording contract with Mercury Records in 1975. Music Career 1976-83, Career Launch at Mercury 
McIntyre made her first recordings for Mercury on January 22, 1976, when she released her debut single. Upon its release that year, I Don't Want to Be a One Night Stand failed to become a major hit on the Billboard Country Music Chart, peaking at number 88 in May. She completed her second recording session September 16, which included the production of her second single, There's Nothing Like the Love, Between a Woman and Man, which reached only number 86 in March 1977. She recorded a third single that April, Glad I Waited Just for You, which reached number 88 by August. That same month, Mercury issued her self-titled debut album. The album was a departure from any of McIntyre's future releases, as it resembled the material of Tanya Tucker and Tammy Wynette, according to all music reviewer Greg Adams. The album itself did not chart the Billboard Top Country Albums chart upon its release. After releasing two singles with Jackie Ward, Three Sheets in the Wind BW I'd Really Love to See You Tonight, and That Makes Two of Us at number 20 and number 26, respectively, Mercury issued her second studio album in 1979. Out of a Dream The album's cover of Patsy Cline's Sweet Dreams became McIntyre's first top 20 hit, reaching number 19 on the Billboard Country chart in November 1979. In 1980, You Lift Me Up, To Heaven, brought her to the top 10 for the first time. Her third studio album, Feel the Fire was released in October and spawned two additional top 20 hit singles that year. In September 1981, McIntyre's fourth album, Heart to Heart was issued and became her first album to chart the Billboard Top Country Albums list, peaking at number two. Its lead single, Today All Over Again became a top five country hit. The album received mainly negative reviews from critics. William Rule Man of All Music gave it two and a half out of five stars, stating she did not get creative control of her music. Rule Man called There Ain't No Love essentially a soft pop ballad. Most of the album's material consisted of mainly country pop-styled ballads, which was not well liked by McIntyre herself. Her fifth album, Unlimited, was issued in June 1982 and spawned her first Billboard number one single in early 1983. Can't even get the blues, and you're the first time I've thought about leaving. The following year, her sixth album, Behind the Scene, was released and was positively received by music critics. In 1983. McIntyre announced her departure from Mercury, criticizing the label's country pop production styles. 1984-90, Breakthrough McIntyre signed with MCA Nashville Records in 1984 and released her seventh studio album, Just a Little Love. Harold Shedd was originally the album's producer, however, McIntyre rejected his suggestions towards country pop arrangements. It was instead produced by Nora Wilson although the album still had a distinguishable country pop sound. Dissatisfied with the album's sound, she went to MCA president, Jimmy Bowen, who told McIntyre to find material that was best suited to her liking. Instead of finding new material, she found previously recorded country hits from her own record collection, which was then recorded for the album. The album's material included songs originally released as singles by Ray Price, Don't You Believe Her? I Want to Hear It From You, Carl Smith, Before I Met You, Farron Young, He's Only Everything, and Connie Smith, You've Got Me Right Where You Want Me. The album spawned two number one singles, How Blue and Somebody Should Leave. It was given positive reviews from critics, with Billboard praising McIntyre as the finest woman country singer since Kitty Wells and Rolling Stone critics honoring her as one of their top five favorite country artists. Upon its release, My Kind of Country became her highest-peaking album on the Top Country Albums chart, reaching number 13. The album also included instruments such as a fiddle and pedal steel guitar, and was aimed more towards a traditional country sound. McIntyre was later praised as a new traditionalist, along with Ricky Skaggs, George Strait, and Randy Travis. That year, she won the Country Music Association Awards Female Vocalist of the Year her first major industry award. The album was certified gold. In 1985, McIntyre released her third MCA album, Have I Got a Deal for You, which followed the same traditional format as My Kind of Country. It was the first album produced by McIntyre and was CO-produced with Jimmy Bowen. 
Like her previous release, the album received positive feedback, including Rolling Stone, which called it a promising debut. The album's second single, Only In My Mind was entirely written by McIntyre and reached number 5 on the Billboard Country Chart. On January 17, 1986, McIntyre became a member of the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville, Tennessee and has been a member ever since. In February 1986, McIntyre's ninth studio album, Whoever's in New England was released. For this album, McIntyre and CO producer Jimmy Bowen incorporated her traditional music style into a mainstream sound that was entirely different from anything she had previously recorded. Country music, the rough guide called the production of the title track, bigger and sentimentalism more obvious, even manipulative. The title track peaked at number one on the Billboard Country Chart and won her a Grammy Award for Best Female Country Vocal Performance the following year. In addition, the album became McIntyre's first release to certify gold in sales by the Recording Industry Association of America, and was later certified platinum. At the end of the year, McIntyre won Entertainer of the Year from the Country Music Association, the highest honor in the awards show. McIntyre released a second album in 1986, her tenth overall, What Am I Gonna Do About You All music critic William Ruhlman was not overly pleased with album's production, saying that it lacked the features that had been set forth on Whoever's in New England Rull Ailman criticized the title track for something of the feel of Whoever's in New England in its portrayal of a woman trying to recover from a painfully ended love affair. The title track was the lead single from the release and became a number one single shortly after its release. This album also spawned a second number one in One Promise Too Late. The following year, her first MCA compilation, Greatest Hits was released and became her first album to be certified platinum in sales, eventually certifying triple platinum. A twelfth studio album, The Last One to Know, was released in 1987. The emotions of her divorce from husband, Charlie Battles, were put into the album's material, according to McIntyre. The title track from the release was a number one single in 1987 and the second single, Love Will Find Its Way to You also reached the top spot. In late 1987, McIntyre released her first Christmas collection, Merry Christmas to You, which sold 2 million copies in the United States, certifying double platinum. The album included cover versions of Away in a Manger, Silent Night, and Grandpa Jones's The Christmas Guest. Her 13th album, Reba, was issued in 1988 and was not well received by critics who claimed she was moving farther away from her traditional country sound. Stereo Review disliked the album's contemporary style, stating, After years of insisting that she'd stick to hardcore country because I have tried the contemporary type songs, and it's not Reba McIntyre it's just not honest, McIntyre, has gone whole hog pop. The album peaked at number one on the top country albums chart and remained there for six consecutive weeks. Okay so maybe that's not so terrible. Although it was reviewed poorly, the album itself was certified platinum in sales and produced two number one singles, I Know How He Feels and New Fool at an Old Game. In addition, the release's cover version of Joe Stafford's A Sunday Kind of Love became a top five hit on the Billboard Country Music chart. Also in 1988, McIntyre founded Starstruck Entertainment, which controlled her management, booking, publishing, promotion, publicity, accounting, ticket sales, and fan club administration. The company would eventually expand into managing a horse farm, jet charter service, trucking, construction, and book publishing. McIntyre's 14th studio album, Sweet 16, was released in May 1989, it spent 16 weeks at number one on the Billboard Top Country Albums chart while also becoming her first album to peak in the top 100 on the Billboard 200, reaching number 78. The album was given positive reviews because unlike her previous studio album, the release, welcomes the fiddles and steel guitars back as she returns to the neo-traditionalist fold, according to All Music, which gave the release 4 and a half out of 5 stars. Reviewer William Ruhlman found Sweet 16 to double back to a formula that worked for her in the past. The lead single was a cover of the Everly Brothers' Kathy's Clown, 
with McEntire's version reaching number one in July on the Billboard Country Music Chart. Three more top ten hits followed from Sweet Sixteen, Till Love Comes Again, Little Girl, and Walk On, at number four, seven and two, respectively. In September she released Reba Live, her first live album, which originally certified gold but certified platinum ten years later. Sixteen months after the release of Sweet Sixteen and after giving birth to her son, McIntyre transitioned into 1990 with the release of Rumor Has It the album's sound and production were almost entirely pop-oriented, according to Kurt Wolf of Country Music, The Rough Guide Although Rumor Has It was an attempt to receive critical praise, many reviewers found the album to be predictable. Stereo Review mainly found the recording displeasing in some places, but the reviewer also believed she still leaves most of the competition in the dust, calling the album glorious. Rumor has it eventually sold 3 million copies by 1999, certifying triple platinum by that year. It was prefaced by the single You Lie, which became her 15th number one single on the country chart. In addition, the album's cover of Bobby Gentry's 1969 hit Fancy and a new track, Fallen Out of Love, became top 10 hits on the same Billboard country chart. 1991, Aviation Accident End for My Broken Heart while on tour for her 1990 album, McIntyre lost eight members of her band, Chris Austin, Kirk Capello, Joey Saganaro, Paula K. Evans, Jim Hammond, Terry Jackson, Anthony Saputo and Michael Thomas, plus pilot Donald Holmes and co-pilot Chris Hollinger, when their charter jet plane crashed near San Diego, California, in the early morning of March 16, 1991. The accident occurred after McIntyre's private performance for IBM executives the night before. The first plane was a Hawker Siddeley DH-125-1A522 charter jet, believed to have taken off around 1.45 a.m. from the Brownfield Municipal Airport, located near the border of Mexico. After reaching an altitude of about 3,572 feet 1,089 m, above sea level, the aircraft crashed on the side of Ote Mountain, located 10 miles east of the airport, while the second plane, carrying her other band members, did not crash. The accident was believed to have occurred due to poor visibility near the mountain, which was not considered prohibitive for flying. The news was reported nearly immediately to McIntyre and her husband, who were sleeping at a nearby hotel. A spokeswoman for McIntyre at the time stated in the Los Angeles Times that she was very close to all of them. Some of them had been with her for years. Reba is totally devastated by this. It's like losing part of your family. Right now she just wants to get back to Nashville. McIntyre dedicated her 16th album, For My Broken Heart, to her deceased road band. Released in October 1991, it contains songs of sorrow and lost love about all measure of suffering, according to Alana Nash of Entertainment Weekly Nash reported that McIntyre still hits her stride with the more traditional songs of emotional turmoil, above all combining a spectacular vocal performance with a terrific song on Buying Her Roses, a wife's head-spinning discovery of her husband's other woman. The release peaked at number one on the Billboard Top Country Albums chart, while also reaching number 13 on the Billboard 200 and eventually sold 4 million copies. Its title track became McIntyre's 16th number one, followed by Is There Life Out There, which also reached number one on the Billboard Country Music Chart. The third single, The Greatest Man I Never Knew, peaked in the top five and her cover of Vicki Lawrence's The Night the Lights Went Out in Georgia reached No. 12. If I Had Only Known, a cut from this album, was later included in the soundtrack to the 1994 film Eight Seconds. 1992-96, continued success. In December 1992, McIntyre's 17th studio album, It's Your Call, was released. It became her first album to peak within the Billboard 200 Top 10, reaching number 8. McIntyre commented that the record was a second chapter to For My Broken Heart, while music reviewers such as Alana Nash of Entertainment Weekly disagreed, writing, in truth, it isn't nearly as pessimistic as its predecessor and unfortunately it isn't anywhere as involving. 
Nash called the album's title track which peaked at number 5 on the Billboard Hot Country Singles and Tracks chart one of those moment of truth sagas at which McIntyre excels. In the song, a wife answers the phone to find her husband's girlfriend on the other end and seizes the opportunity not only to inform her mate that she knows of his affair but to give him the ultimatum of choosing between the two. She's not the only one who's waiting on the line, she sings, handing her husband the phone. It's your call. Christopher John Farley of Time magazine wrote that the album ranged from being relaxing to cathartic, and these vocals from one of the best country singers linger in the mind. The album's preceding singles The Heart Won't Lie, a duet with then-label mate Vince Gill, and Take It Back were top 10 hits on the Billboard country chart, reaching number 1 and number 5 respectively. Like its preceding album, It's Your Call sold over a million copies eventually certifying by the RIAA in sales of double platinum. In October 1993, McIntyre's third compilation album, Greatest Hits Vol. 2 was released, reaching number 1 and number 5 on the Billboard Top Country Albums and Billboard 200 charts respectively, selling 183,000 copies during Christmas week 1993. Out of the 10 tracks were two new singles, the first, Does He Love You? was a duet with Linda Davis. The song later went on to reach number one on the Billboard Hot Country Singles and Tracks chart and win both women a Grammy for Best Country Collaboration with Vocals. Its second single, They Asked About You, was also a top ten hit. The additional eight songs were some of McIntyre's biggest hit singles during a course of five years including The Last One to Know, I Know How He Feels, Kathy's Clown, and The Heart Won't Lie. After originally selling 2 million copies upon its initial release, two times multi-platinum, Greatest Hits Vol. 2 would later certify it five times multi-platinum by the RIAA in 1998. The album has gone to sell over 10 million copies worldwide, which makes it McIntyre's best-selling album to date. Her 18th studio release was 1994's Read My Mind. The album spawned five major hit singles onto the Billboard Country chart, including the number one single The Heart is a Lonely Hunter. The further releases, Till You Love Me, Why Haven't I Heard From You, and And Still, became top ten singles on the same chart, with Till You Love Me also reaching number 78 on the Billboard Hot 100, a chart that she had not previously entered. The album itself reached number two on both the Billboard 200 and Top Country Albums charts. Charlotte Dillon of All Music gave the album four out of five stars, calling it another wonderful offering of songs performed by the gifted country singer Reba McIntyre. Dylan also felt that the album's material had a little soul, a little swing, and some pop, too. Entertainment Weekly's Alana Nash also gave the album positive feedback, viewing the album to have enough boiling rhythms and brooding melodies to reflect the anger and disillusionment of the middle class in the 90s, calling the track she thinks his name was John to be the best example of that idea. The song was eventually spawned as a single and was considered controversial for its storyline, which described a woman who contracts AIDS from a one-night stand due to its subject matter, the song garnered less of a response from radio and peaked at No. 15. Read My Mind became another major seller for McIntyre and her label, selling 3 million copies by 1995 and certifying at three times multi-platinum from the RIAA. After many years of releasing studio albums of newly recorded material, McIntyre's 19th studio album, Starting Over, 1995, was a collection of her favorite songs originally recorded by others from the 1950s through the early 1980s. The album was made to commemorate 20 years in the music industry, but many music critics gave it a less positive response than her previous release. All Music's Stephen Thomas Earl Wine commented that although the album was considered a rebirth for McIntyre, he thought that some tracks were recorded for merely nothing more than entertainment. The album paid tribute to many of McIntyre's favorite artists and included cover versions of Talking in Your Sleep originally sung by Crystal Gale, Please Come to Boston, I Won't Mention It Again sung by Ray Price, Starting Over Again, co-written by Donna Summer and originally a hit for Dolly Parton, On My Own, and by the time I get to Phoenix. On my own featured guest vocals from Davis, as well as Martina McBride and Trisha Yearwood. Despite negative reviews, 
starting over was certified platinum by the Recording Industry Association of America within the first two months of its release, but only one single a cover of Lee Greenwood's Ring on Her Finger, Time on Her Hands was a top ten hit single. 1997-98, What If It's You and If You See Him McIntyre made a major comeback into the music industry the following year with her 20th studio album, What If It's You the album's lead single, The Fear of Being Alone reached no two on the country charts, and its further two singles, How Was I To Know and I'd Rather Ride Around With You, reached number one and number two respectively. The release garnered higher critical acclaim than Starting Over, with Tom Owens of All Music calling the album nevertheless an excellent reminder of her deep talents as a vocalist. MCA Nashville chairman Bruce Hinton told Billboard how pleased he was with McIntyre's release, calling the album's ten tracks powerful and concluding by stating, There are so many writers and so many great songs in Nashville, and Reba has collected her disproportionate share, she's country music's female artist of the 90s. What If It's You peaked at number one top country albums and number 15 on the Billboard 200 while also becoming her first album in three years to certify in multi-platinum sales, selling two million copies by 1999. At the end of 1997, McIntyre also charted at number 23 the charity single What If. The proceeds of sales for this single were donated to the Salvation Army. In 1997, McIntyre headlined a tour with Brooks and Dunn that led to the recording of If You See Him If You See Her with the duo the following year. This song was included on McIntyre's If You See Him album and Brooks and Dunn's If You See Her album, both of which were released on June 2. Tom Owens of All Music reported in its review that both album titles were named nearly the same as a way to draw attention for both parties, since they were no longer new guns they were veterans in danger of losing ground to younger musicians. The duet reached number one on the Billboard Hot Country Singles and Tracks chart in June 1998 and spawned an additional three top ten hits during that year, Forever Love, Wrong Night, and One Honest Heart. In addition, If You See Him peaked within the top ten on both the Billboard 200 and Top Country Albums chart, reaching number eight and number two, respectively. 1999-2001 So Good Together and Greatest Hits Volume 3, I'm a Survivor. In 1999, McIntyre released two albums. In September she issued her second Christmas album, The Secret of Giving, a Christmas collection, which eventually sold 500,000 copies in the United States. In November, her 22nd studio album, So Good Together was released, spawning three singles. The first release, What Do You Say and the second release, I'll Be Both reached the top five on the Hot Country Singles and Tracks chart. So Good Together also brought her into the top 40 of the Billboard Hot 100 for the first time, peaking at no 31. The album would eventually certify platinum by the end of the decade. What Do You Say became her first crossover hit as well. Unlike any of her previous albums, So Good Together was produced by three people, including McIntyre. Entertainment Weekly commented that most of the album's material was an odd set mostly ballads, including an English-Portuguese duet with José E. Durval on Boss Skaggs' We're All Alone. In 2001, McIntyre returned with her third Greatest Hits album, Greatest Hits Vol. 3, I'm a Survivor. The album helped McIntyre receive her third gold certification from the Recording Industry Association of America, which made her the most certified female country artist in music history. It spawned the number three hit I'm a Survivor, which would be her last major hit for two years, as McIntyre would go on a temporary hiatus to focus on her television sitcom, Reba. The album's only other single, a cover of Kenny Rogers' Sweet Music Man, went to number 36. 2307, Return to the Music Industry. McIntyre's 76th chart single, I'm Gonna Take That Mountain, released in mid 2003 ended her two-year break from recording. In November 2003, her 23rd studio album, Room to Breathe, marked her first release of new material in four years. Writing for the Boston Globe, Steve Morse found the album's material to have a variety of musical stylings, saying the track Love Revival sounded like Tanya Tucker and calling If I Had Any Sense at All a mournful country ballad. 
Dan McIntosh of Country Standard Time gave room to breathe a less received review, reporting that it ultimately falls short of leaving the listener breathless. He highlighted I'm Gonna Take That Mountain for sounding like a bluegrass inspired song such as music by Ricky Skaggs or Patti Loveless. The album itself reached a peak of number 4 on the Billboard Top Country Albums chart and number 25 on the Billboard 200, staying at the position for only one week. The second single, Somebody, also recorded by Mark Wills on his Loving Every Minute release, became her 22nd number one single on the Billboard Hot Country Songs chart and first since If You See Him If You See Her six years previous. This became her 33rd number one single overall. It took longer than expected to become a hit, according to McIntyre, who said, Yeah, that had us concerned. The album came out in November and it took 30 weeks for somebody to work its way up the charts. Usually, it's 15 weeks. But this one had a resurgence of life, especially after the video came out. MCA is really kicking butt with it. Its third single, he gets that from me reached number seven, followed by the Amy Daly CO written track My Sister, which reached number 16. In 2005, McIntyre released the compilation Reba 1S. The album comprised all 33 number one hits in her career on all major trade charts. Two new songs were included on the album, You're Gonna Be and Love Needs a Holiday. Both were released as singles, peaking at number 33 and number 60 respectively, with the latter becoming her first single in 27 years to miss the country top 40 entirely country standard time called the tracks Whoever's in New England and You Lie the album highlights. The album reached a peak of number 3 on the top country albums chart and number 12 on the Billboard 200 upon its release, certifying two times platinum by the RIAA within two years. On August 30, 2007, McIntyre received two CMA nominations, Female Vocalist of the Year and Vocal Event of the Year. With those two nominations plus another in 2008 and two more in 2009, McIntyre became the female artist with the most nominations, 48, in the 43-year history of the CMA Awards, surpassing Dolly Parton, who has 43. In mid-2007, McIntyre announced the release of her 25th studio album, Reba, duets, on September 18. McIntyre stated that out of all the albums she had previously recorded, her newest release was particularly special, this is an album that will go down in history as probably my favorite album to record because I got to work and sing and be with my friends. Out of everything in this whole career that I can say that I'm the most proud of, are my friends. And here's the proof. In promotion for the album, McIntyre made appearances at radio shows and on The Oprah Winfrey Show September 19. The album's lead single, Because of You a duet with Kelly Clarkson, who originally recorded the song became her 55th top 10 single on the Billboard Hot Country Songs chart, tying her with Dolly Parton, who also had the same amount of top 10 records. The album was given high critical praise from magazines such as Pop Matters, which called McIntyre's vocals to sound sweet without being syrupy, while being extremely powerful. McIntyre's vocal strength yields a different kind of authority than the bluesy, drawling growl of Janis Joplin, the weathered rasp of Marianne Faithful, or even the soul-shrieking powerhouse of Tina Turner. Instead, Reba's voice combines the aspects of all three singers but tempers it with a southern sweetness and an unmistakable femininity. The album contained ten tracks of duets with country and pop artists, including Kenny Chesney, Leanne Rimes, Trisha Yearwood, Carole King, and Justin Timberlake. Reba, duets peaked at number one on the Top Country Albums chart, while also becoming her first album in her 30-year career to peak and debut at number one on the Billboard 200, with 300,536 copies, according to Nielsen SoundScan, sold within its first week of release. On January 17, 2008, McIntyre embarked on the Two Worlds Two Voices tour with Clarkson, which began in Fairborn, Ohio and ended in November of the same year. A month after its release, the album was certified platinum by the Recording Industry Association of America on October 19, 2007. The album's only other single was Every Other Weekend. 
Recorded on the album as a duet with Chesney, it was released to radio with its CEO writer, Skip Ewing, as a duet partner. 2008-12, moved to Valori. In early 2008, McIntyre partnered again with Brooks and Dunn for a re-recorded version of their single Cowgirls Don't Cry. McIntyre is featured in the video, but not on the version found on the album Cowboy Town. It became McIntyre's 56th top 10 country hit, breaking Dolly's record for the most top 10 country hits for a solo female. In November 2008, McIntyre announced that she would be departing from her label of 25 years and signing with the Valori Music Group, an imprint of Big Machine Records, coincidentally distributed by MCA and Mercury's parent, Universal Music Group. Under MCA, she had sold a total of 67 million records worldwide and won two Grammys. The switch to Valori reunited McIntyre with the label's president, Scott Borchetta who had worked as senior vice president of promotion at MCA during most of the 1990s. McIntyre later commented on her label switch, stating, I am thrilled to be joining the Valori team. Scott and I worked together on some of the biggest singles of my career, and I am excited to renew our partnership. In November, 2008, MCA released a 50 Greatest Hits box set compilation album, containing three CDs, from 1984's How Blue to 2007's Because of You. On April 5, 2009, McIntyre debuted her first single, Strange, on Valori at the 2009 Academy of Country Music Awards. The song debuted at number 39 on the Billboard Hot Country Songs chart, giving McIntyre the highest single debut of her career, and went on to peak at number 11. Her 26th studio album, Keep On Loving You was released August 18, 2009, and became McIntyre's first solo studio album in six years. The album gained fairly positive reviews from most album critics. On August 26, Keep On Loving You became McIntyre's second album to top both the Billboard Country and 200 charts, selling almost 96,000 copies within its first week. With the album, McIntyre broke the record for the female country artist with the most Billboard No. 1 albums, which was previously held by Loretta Lynn. On August 18 the label released the album's second single, Consider Me Gone, and it debuted at No. 51 on the Hot Country Singles chart. The single became McIntyre's 34th No. 1 on the Billboard chart in December. With a four-week stay at No. 1, this song became the longest-lasting No. 1 of her career as well as the first multi-week number one by a female country singer since Taylor Swift's Our Song in 2007. The album's third and final single was I Keep On Loving You, CO written by Ronnie Dunn of Brooks and Dunn, which peaked at number seven. McIntyre's 34th studio album, All The Women I Am, was released on November 9, 2010, under Valori Music Group Starstruck Records. The album's lead single called Turn On The Radio was released on August 3, 2010, and the music video premiered on August 18, 2010. Upon its release, All The Women I Am received generally positive reviews from most music critics. At Metacritic, which assigns a normalized rating out of 100 to reviews from mainstream critics, the album received an average score of 72, based on four reviews which indicates generally favorable reviews. On November 10, 2010, McIntyre appeared at the Country Music Association Awards performing her version of Beyoncé's If I Were a Boy. On December 20, 2010, McIntyre scored her 35th Billboard No. 1 single in the U.S. with Turn On The Radio. The second single from All The Women I Am was a cover of Beyoncé's If I Were a Boy, which McIntyre took to number 22. After it came When Love Gets a Hold of You at number 40 and Somebody's Chelsea at number 44. The latter was the only single that McIntyre had CO written since Only in My Mind in 1985. McIntyre later announced that she would be visiting 31 cities on her All the Women I Am tour late that year with the band Perry, Steel Magnolia and Eden's Edge as opening acts on different stops of the tour. Dates for the tour were announced July 6, 2011. On March 1, 2011, 
the Country Music Association announced that McIntyre would be inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. McIntyre was unable to attend the announcement after her father had slipped into a coma following a stroke. McIntyre was inducted by Dolly Parton into the Country Music Hall of Fame on May 22, 2011, at a medallion ceremony at the Country Music Hall of Fame in Nashville. 2014-2016, Nash Icon, Love Somebody, Christmas, and Gospel Albums On October 21, 2014, it was announced that McIntyre would be the inaugural signing for Big Machine's new imprint Nash Icon Music. She also disclosed that she was working on a new album, with 11 new songs. Her first single for the new label, Going Out Like That, was announced December 16, 2014 and was released on January 6, 2015. It served as the lead-off single to Love Somebody, McIntyre's 27th studio album, released on April 14, 2015. Love Somebody debuted at number one on the Billboard Top Country Albums her 12th number one album on the chart and number three on Billboard 200, selling 62,469 copies in the U.S. The album has sold 171,600 copies in the U.S. as of October 5, 2015. In 2016, McIntyre was selected as one of 30 artists to perform on Forever Country, a mashup track of Take Me Home, Country Roads, On the Road Again and I Will Always Love You which celebrates 50 years of the CMA Awards. McIntyre released her third Christmas album My Kind of Christmas on September 2, 2016. The album is exclusively sold at Cracker Barrel and online. In conjunction, McIntyre is also selling her own line of clothing, home decor, jewelry and other things also at Cracker Barrel. 2017 present, Rockin' R Records, Reba's Business Incorporated, Gospel Album. After she and her husband separated, McIntyre managed herself while she recruited Justin McIntosh of Starstruck Entertainment, Leslie Matthews and Carolyn Snell who is part of her team, that settled in Green Hills, Nashville. On December 15, 2016, McIntyre announced that she is releasing her first gospel album titled Sing It Now, Songs of Faith and Hope. It is set for release on February 3, 2017, and will consist of two discs. Disc 1 will be traditional hymns while Disc 2 will be original tracks Softly and Tenderly, featuring Kelly Clarkson and Trisha Yearwood, was the first track off the album released. Another track on the album, In the Garden Wonderful Peace, features the Isaacs. J. Demarcus of the Rascal Flats produced the album. The first single off the album is Back to God. Grand O.L.E. Opry When Reba McIntyre made her Grand O.L.E. Opry debut on September 17, 1977, she almost did not make it in the door after a guard at the Opry gate missed her name on the night's list of performers. Her parents and older sister, Alice, drove 1,400 miles round trip from their Oklahoma home to see what turned out to be Reba's three-minute performance that night. Her act was cut from two songs to just one invitation to the blues because of a surprise appearance from Dolly Parton. McIntyre was inducted into the Grand O.L.E. Opry on January 17, 1986. The Grand O.L.E. Opry is a home, she says. It's a family. It's like a family reunion, when you come back and get to see everybody. Acting career. 1989-99. Entry into film and television acting During the late 1980s, many of McIntyre's music videos were being described as mini-movies. In each video, she would portray a different character, which distinguished her music videos from other videos released by artists during that time. In the late 1980s, McIntyre became interested in an acting career, eventually hiring an agent. In 1989, she co hosted Good Morning America on ABC. In 1990, she obtained her first film role playing Heather Gummer in the horror comedy Tremors, along with Kevin Bacon. The film told the story of a small group of people living in Nevada who were fighting subterranean worm like creatures. After the film's release, McIntyre developed a strong interest in acting and made it her second career. The following year, 
she starred along with Kenny Rogers and Burt Reynolds in the made-for-television movie, The Gambler Returns, The Luck of the Draw in 1994, McIntyre worked with director, Rob Reiner in the film, North, playing Ma Tex. The film obtained negative reviews, receiving only two and a half stars from Almovie. In 1994, McIntyre starred in Eyes Their Life Out There, a television movie based on her song of the same name. The following year, she appeared in Buffalo Girls, which was based upon the life of Western cowgirl, Calamity Jane, played by Angelica Houston. Playing Jane's friend, Annie Oakley, Buffalo Girls was nominated for an Emmy Award. In 1996, McIntyre was cast by director James Cameron as Molly Brown in his film Titanic. However, when it became apparent production for the film would extend well beyond its original length, McIntyre had to turn down the part, as she had already scheduled prior concert engagements. The role was recast with Kathy Bates. In 1998, she starred as Lizzie Brooks in Forever Love, which was based upon McIntyre's hit single of the same name. 2007, Broadway and Television Series In early 2001, McIntyre expanded into theatre, starring in the Broadway revival of Annie Get Your Gun playing Annie Oakley, whom she had previously portrayed in Buffalo Girls, her performance was critically acclaimed by several newspapers, including the New York Times, which commented, without qualification the best performance by an actress in a musical comedy this season. McIntyre personally called the musical, some of the hardest work I've ever done in my life. In 2005, McIntyre starred as Nellie Forbush in the Carnegie Hall concert production of the Broadway musical South Pacific with Alec Baldwin as Luther Billis and Brian Stokes Mitchell as Emile de Beck, directed by Walter Bobby and with an adapted script by David Ives. The concert was broadcast as part of the Great Performances series in 2006. In October 2001, McIntyre premiered her half-hour television sitcom Reba on the WB network. The show was based around divorced mother Reba Hart, who learns how to handle life situations after her husband divorces her and their teenage daughter becomes pregnant. Reba garnered critical acclaim and success, becoming the network's highest-rated television show for adults ranging from the ages of 18 to 49. The show ran for six seasons and earned McIntyre a nomination for a Golden Globe Award. It was cancelled on February 18, 2007. The series finale had 8.7 million viewers. 2011, Return to Television In September 2011, McIntyre confirmed on her website that ABC had ordered a pilot for her second television series, Malibu Country. McIntyre would play a divorced mother of two who moves to Malibu, California to restart her music career. The pilot was filmed in April 2012 and began production on its first season in August. It was announced that the pilot for Malibu Country would premiere November 2, 2012. The show then began showing every Friday night at 8,3730C on ABC. On May 11, 2012, McIntyre tweeted that the show had been picked up. She also was the host in the 2011 NASCAR Award Show in Las Vegas. Despite reports that Malibu Country was the most watched freshman comedy in its debut season, 8.7 million, the show was cancelled on May 10, 2013, after 18 episodes. 2017, Second Return to Television In January, 2017, it was announced that McIntyre will star and produce the untitled Southern Drama series for ABC. The project was created by Mark Cherry, who best known as Desperate Housewives creator. McIntyre plays the leading role of Ruby Adair, the sheriff of colorful small town Oxblood, Kentucky. Musical Styles and Legacy McIntyre's sound has been influenced by the country music of Bob Wills, Merle Haggard, Dolly Parton, Barbara Mandrell, and Patsy Cline. In college, McIntyre would attend local dances at the Oklahoma-Texas border so she could dance to Wills's music, commenting that, it didn't get any better than dancing to Bob Will's music. She also explained Merle Haggard's influence on her career, stating I had every album he ever put out, and would sing every song he did, 
along with her brother, Paik, and sister, Susie. In addition, her first major hit, Sweet Dreams was a remake of Patsy Cline's version of the song, according to McIntyre herself. McIntyre's music has been described to not only be built upon traditional country music, but also expand into the genres of country pop, mainstream pop, soul, adult contemporary, and Rand B. At times, her music has often been criticized for moving away from traditional country music. Many music critics have often called her music to be melodramatic, formulaic, and bombastic, particularly after her 1988 album, Reba Dot Studio releases such as Sweet Sixteen, Rumor Has It, It's Your Call, and Starting Over have often been described by these terms. McIntyre possesses a contralto vocal range and performs vocal gymnastics with her voice, a musical technique in which a singer twirls a note around, using their vibrato. McIntyre has often credited Dolly Parton for influencing this trait, stating that she would always listen to Parton's records and find her style of vocal gymnastics, so pretty. McIntyre has often been regarded as one of country music's most influential female vocalists and most beloved entertainers. He is highly credited for remaining one of country's most popular female artists for nearly four decades, maintaining her success by continually incorporating contemporary musical sounds without changing her traditional vocal style. Or many new artists, she has been credited as the inspiration to their careers in country music, including Faith Hill, Martina McBride, Trisha. Yearwood, and Leanne Rhymes. She has also been credited as an inspiration to other performers such as Sarah Evans, Kelly Clarkson, Leanne Womack, Terry Clark, Taylor Swift, and Carrie Underwood. The Net Music Countdown second handedly reported that influence has manifested itself in many ways. As a role model, she's shown others how to handle fame with grace and good humor while never backing down from her values or goals. Just as importantly, she's shown others to refuse to accept limitations on what she can do or how much she can achieve. McIntyre also explained to the online website, Whatever I'm doing, I feel like I'm representing country music. It's always been my main career, and it's where my loyalties lie. I feel like I'm waving the flag of country music wherever I go, and I couldn't be prouder to do it. Personal Life Two of her siblings have also had careers in the music industry. Her brother Paik dabbled in the country music industry in the late 80s but returned to Oklahoma after a brief stint. He owns and operates a 1,000-acre ranch near Colgate, Oklahoma and continues to rodeo. Her sister Susie is a successful Christian music singer who travels the country with her husband, speaking and performing. She also has an older sister, Alice Foran a retired social worker who resides in Lane, Oklahoma. Her niece, Calamity McIntyre, is an assistant basketball coach at the University of Arizona. Her career started to gain significant and sustained momentum. In 1989, McIntyre married her manager and former steel guitar player, Narvel Blackstock. The couple wed in a private ceremony on a boat in Lake Tahoe. Together, the pair took over all aspects of McIntyre's career, forming Starstruck Entertainment, which was originally designed to help manage her career. From her second marriage, McIntyre inherited three stepchildren, Chastity, Shauna, and Brandon, and then gave birth to a son, Shelby Stephen McIntyre Blackstock, in February 1990. On August 3, 2015, it was announced in a joint statement on McIntyre's website that she and Blackstock had been separated for a few months after 26 years of marriage. McIntyre announced in December 2015 that their divorce had been finalized on October 28, 2015. Despite the divorce, McIntyre remains very close to her three stepchildren as well as the Blackstock family. She adores her stepchildren's six children and considers them her grandchildren. McIntyre's stepson Brandon Blackstock is married to singer Kelly Clarkson. Speaking about their impending marriage in 2013, McIntyre stated she was thrilled to death, thrilled to death. To have my buddy as my daughter-in-law, I mean, who could ask for more? Accolades McIntyre holds the record for the most Academy of Country Music Top Female Vocalist Awards, 7, 
and American Music Awards for Favorite Country Female Artist, 12. She also holds the distinction of being the first to win the Country Music Association's Female Vocalist of the Year Award four times consecutively. Martina McBride won Female Vocalist four times, although not consecutively. In 2013, Miranda Lambert tied McIntyre to win Female Vocalist four years in a row. McIntyre is also a rare musical artist to achieve solo number ones across four decades, 1980s, 1990s, 2000s, 2010s. She holds the record for most CMA Award nominations for a female artist, with 49. Reba also holds the record with the most ACM Awards nominations for a female artist with 45, respectively.